Hi everyone, I am uh, Bejawi Suhail, Udo Developer at Axon. Uh, today we're going to see how to manage uh, subscriptions in Udo using contract uh, modules. But uh, let me before that thank those who made this virtual event possible and gave us the chance uh, to meet this year again. Sorry. In the last decade, the subscription business model got his way to be the solution for company selling services. The question always was how to be uh, a healthy company that can estimate its revenue and have reasonable secure and secure evolution uh, plan. Companies that adopted the one-shot sale got always the dilemma to find the correct price to cover product cost and company benefit from a site and meet the customer purchasing power from uh, the other side. This is not an easy question uh, to answer. The subscription model has that solution to amortize the cost, ensure stable revenue, and have a business model attractive to, uh, to the client. Study says that by uh, 2022, 53% of all software revenue will be generated from a subscription uh, model. So you are surely seeing what uh, I want to say. An ERP must cover this uh, business uh, model. We do introduce what we can call a base contract uh, data model in version 6.1, and it didn't really evolve since that, but the community managed to create many modules around it to give a mature contract management system in version 9, Udo choose to abandon the contract module and create a new one under uh, the enterprise uh, license. That's why the community moved the base module under OCI contract repository and became the only responsible of its maintenance and uh, improvement. In version 12, we decided to go in a deep refactoring and improvement of the data model. And we can say that the resulted contract module we made shared a few things with the previous uh, versions. And now it's a complete suite of features that can manage several use cases when it's about uh, subscription. In this presentation, I will use Udo as an IT company that sells web development and hosting services. The workflow will be to uh, start by configuring my uh, product catalog, respond to a request for quotation from a new customer, confirm the sale order and see how the contract is created, generate invoices, and then upsell my, uh, my contract. I will use uh, this uh, modules, uh, contract module to manage contracts and recurring invoicing, uh, product contract to create contract from sale orders, contract forecasts, and uh, contract variable quantity to have a variable quantity when invoicing a contract based on a uh, formula. And for our scenario, I will show you how uh, I will show you two use cases, how to invoice timesheets and how to invoice imported quantity relatively to the working uh, days. This presentation will be in uh, version 12 as uh, the migration to version 13 is in progress and those modules are not available yet. For those who are interested, we can use some help boosting the work uh, you need just to, to follow uh, the contract repository. So let's start the workflow. I switch uh, to Udo. As said, uh, we need to configure the product catalog of my uh, company. Here I can see that I already added uh, some products, but uh, the backup service is missing, which, which is very wanted by my customer. So I want to create it. I create backup here. When I select the service uh, type, a checkbox appears to ask me if this product is a subscription. When I check it, uh, a contract tab appears uh, where I can see, uh, where I can define default configuration of my uh, new product. Those default values will be proposed to my salesperson when they add this product to quotation or, cut or a contract and help them to speed uh, input. Now let, uh, let's see uh, those fields one by one. Uh, to start with uh, this field contract template, let me explain uh, something in the base module. Uh, we can create a contract from a predefined template. 
it's easy, efficient, and time gain. It's like uh, the quotation template in sale order. We have a predefined template that will generate a contract. This is uh, can be used for my uh, popular offers in uh, and made it in such uh, template. But the contract template is used also when I am creating a contract from sale order. The system will group product by contract template and create uh, a contract for each uh, group. Uh, the template values will be used in uh, to uh, uh, will be used to create them. So if I have in my uh, sale order different sale lines uh, with different uh, con contract template, the system will group each uh, each uh, will use each group to create one uh, one contract. So I will have if I see here. For example, I have two contract template hosting and development. When I will confirm my sale order, the system will group uh, all hosting product in one uh, in one contract. So uh, my uh, my backup uh, product uh, belongs to the hosting contract uh, template. The next thing to set is how and when my product is uh, invoiced. It's invoiced every month uh, in prepaid, which means that the invoice will be generated at the first day of the invoicing period. The default quantity is uh, 12. This field defines how long is my first subscription will be. In this case, it's 12 months. So now if I check this auto renew uh, checkbox, the subscription will be automatically renewed by year when the end of uh, contract comes. And the customer have here this field termination notice before define uh, when the customer uh, can uh, notice us uh, if he want to resign uh, his his contract. Now here he have one month before the end of his subscription to notice us. Otherwise, it will be automatically uh, renewed. This uh, product is uh, invoiced in a variable quantity. It's not fixed quantity. If it's fixed quantity, we will invoice every month the quantity we set on the contract. But here I say it's a variable quantity using the formula uh, prorated uh, quantity. The prorated quantity is uh, computed according to the number of billed days. For example, if uh, the contract starts today and my contract is uh, invoiced uh, at the uh, here invoiced at the monthly last day, the last day of the month, the system will uh, only invoice the half of uh, the period. The customer will pay. Uh, in the first invoice, the half of what he is supposed to pay as we only provided the service for uh, a half of the invoicing uh, period. And let me save my product. And to continue with uh, formula, let's take a look on the web development. Here, uh, you see that I selected the formula task uh, timesheet, which will get the invoicing quantity from users' uh, timesheets. This is very... Uh, very useful in, in practice, and you can find more formulas in the contract repository for other uh, use case. Now, with my product catalog is ready, uh, we, we can create our quotation. So I go and create a quotation. I select a customer and start by the web development pro product. Now you can see that all the fields uh, that we set on uh, the product are here and pre-filled. Uh, pre Plus, we can see that that start and that end of my subscription was computed based on uh, the invoicing uh, method and uh, the default quantity we, we selected, which is here uh, 12. And uh, here I can see that uh, the quantity type is variable and the quantity formula is type sheet. Okay, let's add the hosting. It's okay, the same thing. Let's suppose that to access to our uh, server manager, you need a license. So here the license is a bit different for, from uh, the other uh, contract line. It's invoiced every year. The, the customer need to, to, pay, uh, to pay it. Uh, the year end I selected is a fixed quantity. It's not computed in prorated quantity. Just he need to pay one, one license. Then uh, the backup service. 
And to end, uh, let's suppose that uh, we have some setups fees that the customer pay when he starts his, his contract. So if you see here, uh, the fees of the contract are not, uh, the contract fees are not uh, shown here because this is a normal product. And when I save my, uh, my sale order and uh, confirm it, you can see that the, the system created two contracts. If you remember what we said when we config, configured the, uh, the new product, the system created a contract for each contract template. And you can see here only uh, the setup fees line is colored, which means that uh, it can be invoiced immediately. We do know that the other lines will be invoiced in the contract, so they are not flagged as so they are flagged as uh, no billable. No, now let's take a look on the contract. We have a development contract here and the hosting one. In uh, this contract, we find uh, the three uh, hosting uh, related product. Each line have its own uh, start date and date and date of next uh, next invoice. I find I find also all the fields that I used in the sale order and the product on uh, the contract uh, the contract line on the contract level i have access to the forecast report that will show me what revenue i can expect from this uh, contract by invoicing uh, date many other fields are available to go further in uh, the analysis you may notice here in the first period for uh, the hosting and the backup uh, the the, the price is low than the other uh, the other month. This is bec because we 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 set uh, already the the prorated for formula. And if I open the first uh, period, we see that we didn't invoice uh, a full month. That's why we bill uh, less. So let's go back now to the contract. There are many ways to invoice my contract. I can do it manually using uh, the button uh, here if I am in uh, developer mode or from a wizard in the invoicing app by selecting a date. Here I can see that I will invoice a uh, true contract or just wait uh, the planet action. There, are, there is a planet action uh, that check every day. Uh, the contract that can be uh, that that, uh, that can be invoiced. But before running uh, the invoicing action, let me log time in my sheet to see how it will be invoiced. But when I'm uh, creating my sale order, I forget to link uh, to link my uh, contract uh, to to my order to to uh, to the analytic account of my my project. So uh, I can do it directly on my web development project here. I link it to this project. So now as I am in uh, with the formula uh, task time sheet, uh, the system will check uh, the user lock time, the user's lock time on this analytic account and will invoice it when we uh, go to invoice. So I go to the time sheet, I log some stuff here. I need to select development project, a task, and I uh, will log 12 hours. I go back to the invoicing app and create the invoices. And here the system, as you see, created two invoices, one per each contract. And uh, for the development uh, product, I can see he, uh, the quantity here, 22, because I have already uh, logged uh, for my test uh, 10 hours. So uh, he, he got here uh, the log time from, uh, from the timesheet. Let's go back to the contract. After my first invoice, you see that the license, uh, the license line changes the color. 
this is because it will not be uh, invoiced in the in the next run as it's configured to be an annual uh, subscription. Okay, now let's talk about this uh, button. In the real life, a customer can ask to end his contract, suspend it, if uh, suspend it for some time, or we can suspend it ourselves because we are fixing things and we don't want to invoice the customer while we are uh, cleaning up uh, the mess. With this buttons here, uh, we can uh, cover all uh, those use cases. All right, everything is in place. My customer is getting uh, his invoices and he's quite satisfied with our service and he asked it for an upgrade or let's say an upsell. For that, I need to make a new order for uh, the product hosting plus plus because he asked it to upgrade uh, his hosting uh, uh, service. I create a new one. I need to select uh, the same customer, of course, and I select the hosting plus plus. If I confirm my order like this, the system will create a new contract, and this is not what I want. I want him to update this contract, the hosting is to uh, 33. And uh, not just that, I want my hosting plus plus to replace my hosting. He don't want to have both uh, pa uh, packages in the same time. So here I say I want to stop this one by uh, the hosting plus plus. My hosting plus plus will start the 1st of December. So I'm, I save my order and confirm it. And I see that the system uh, linked my SO to a contract and it's the same contract, it didn't create a new one. And if I uh, check my uh, contract lines, I see that the hosting will continue to the end of November and the hosting plus plus will take place uh, the first of uh, first of December, and it's colored in black because it's not it will not be invoiced in the next in the next uh, run. So, with this magic button that give access to the sale order and all the contract line, I can easily understand the chronology of my contract change, what line took place of uh, another line, but it's not just uh, that. I can see here in the chat uh, more details of each action. Here I see that the contract line hosting was stopped uh, and uh, was stopped for uh, this period. And more than that, uh, in the upselling line, I can see here the predecessor, predecessor contract line so I can uh, easily understand uh, that this line took place of, uh, of this one. So that's it for me. We show uh, all the workflow, but before finishing, I wanted to give some ideas how to improve the invoicing process based on our experience with a customer making uh, 10,000 invoices per month. The first thing, uh, uh, that uh, you should do is to use uh, the queue job to plan invoices creation uh, one in, one job per contract like this you and your users you can follow uh, the invoicing uh, process it's better than having uh, 10,000 uh, invoices created by uh, Ehron in uh, in the ba in the back end so, and another benefit, if there is a problem, one job will fail, but all the invoicing process will, uh, will continue. The other thing that you can do to, to improve the process is automatically validate invoices after its creation. Here we are talking about uh, invoices created from, uh, from contracts. So uh, there, is, uh, there is not really uh, things to, to check by the users and uh, the amount of invoices, uh, with the amount of invoices, it's impossible that the, the user check uh, all invoices. So let validate it uh, automatically. It's better than uh, give this responsibility to the user. It will took uh, a lot of time off. Uh, Another thing that we can do is uh, automatically send the invoice to our customer when it's uh, ready. If his uh, transmit method is email, automatically send it with, uh, with an email within the creation uh, job of the invoice. 
uh, if uh, the partner transmit method is passed, we can pre-render the invoice document with each, uh, with, uh, each invoice. And at the end of the invoicing uh, process, merge all invoices document in one PDF and make this attachment available for your user to just download it and uh, print it. That's it. Now I will, be, uh, I will be happy to answer your question if there are uh, some. Yeah, hi. So like anyone wants to ask any question, I guess we have few. So Virginia asked, do you use this module to invoice your customers each month? And uh, do you massively validate and send the invoices by email? Uh, sorry, I, did, I don't see the, the question. It's on uh, Zoom. Yeah, or it's on the Q&A tab. So I am just uh -huh. conveying. Like, uh, like she asked, like, uh, do you want, do you use this module to invoice your customers each month? Yes. And do you massively validate and send the invoices? Yes, by email? this is this is one of the ideas I gave. Uh, I gave at the end of my presentation. Uh, it's not in the base module of, uh, of OSIA. We did this on another module. We can uh, publish it uh, if uh, there are uh, someone who need it. Uh, we validate all uh, invoices uh, after, uh, after the creation and uh, send it by email, not e just email, because there is uh, an OSIA module which uh, defines a transmit method for each partner. So for partners who decide to receive their invoices by, by post, we pre-render the document and generate uh, one PDF at the end of the process. Okay. Thank you. And so there was one more question she asked, like on which Hudu version are all these features available? Uh, the contract module, uh, was available on uh, since 6.1, but uh, the deep refactoring we we did, uh, the most of these features uh, are on version 12, and the migration to version 13 and version version 14 is uh, is uh, we are doing it right now. Okay, thank you. So I hope, uh, Virginia, that answers your questions. So there's one more question from Lawrence. Are the timesheets put on the invoice by this module as it would happen with sales uh, underscore timesheet? So you can give timesheets information on the invoice. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's something like sale timesheet, but, but here we are uh, more oriented, uh, oriented to, to uh, subscription. We have an in-progress contract and we want to automatic this process because uh, if I am not wrong in sale timesheet, it's the, the project manager who need to, who, the salesman who need to uh, make a sale, a sale each, uh, each, uh, at, at the end of each month to avoid the lock time. But with with uh, this with the contract uh, with the contract it's automatically at the end of uh, at the, the end of the invoicing period the system will get uh, the invoicing uh, the, the the log time that we can uh, invoice the, the the next part of your question so you can give timesheets information on the invoice yes this is possible uh, it's not in uh, it's not in the uh, base uh, base module, but uh, the way uh, the contract variable quantity is uh, is used, we can uh, collect data and uh, put them on uh, the invoice uh, uh, invoice description. We didn't do it, but I believe it's uh, quite easy to, uh, to do. Okay, thank you. So another question is from Goldberg that uh, do you use contract to generate invoices based on readings, not timesheets like GPUs or bandwidth? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't believe that this is something that is uh, that exists, but it can be done easily. Uh, again, uh, the contract variable quantity. Uh, it was made in a really generic uh, way. So if ha if we have 
an access from Udo to some server to collect data, we can use the, the contract variable quantity to base the formula on it and uh, send it back to, to, to the contract. So I guess Virginia asked one more question. Uh, could you explain in more details the button available on the sales order? Yes, uh, it's not on the sale order, sorry, it's on uh, the contract. So uh, let me share my screen again. Do you see here my, my screen? Yeah, you can see. So here uh, I am on the contract, I'm not on the sale order. I have uh, different buttons on each uh, contract line. So I, I say, for example, imagine that uh, we have a problem uh, on our servers and uh, the, the customer don't have access to his, uh, to, to, to his website and we are fixing it and we estimate, for example, it, it will took uh, one week. It's, uh, it's not something that uh, really happened, but let's imagine this use case. So uh, I need, uh, he want to, to stop his backup for uh, that week so, because he don't really uh, have, have this service. So when I select, when I uh, click on the pause button here, I select uh, a week. Uh, let's say the first week of January, it was stopped. So the system will split the backup line onto two lines. And uh, the first one, it will stop uh, the end of December. And uh, the other uh, one, it will, uh, it will start just after the week we, we stopped. Like this. Automatically, the system will not uh, will not invoice uh, the, this week. And for example, my my customer has uh, another example I can uh, set here. My customer can't pay me uh, for uh, the backup. Let's say between uh, January and and March. So he asked to stop the contract uh, for for three months. I can do it like that. If he, for example, he say, okay, I uh, ordered uh, the backup, uh, the backup, but uh, that will start in first uh, January, but I don't want it anymore. Uh, we have here a cancel button. It will cancel, uh, it will cancel the contract line, or we can, for example, his contract here, uh, here, for example, uh, the hosting plus plus which will end at uh, the end of november uh, 21 he say no i want it to end on june so i click on this stop button i select june the end of june 21 i validate so here uh, it's uh, changed and i have in the chat all the change I, I made. Thank you. So, uh, the next, next question is like, how to stop invoicing when we are cleaning the mess? Uh, I just show it now. Uh, I just show it. How to, to yeah. stop invoicing. So uh, I guess that's all the question for the session right now. And like if anyone has any other questions, they can ask on Discord channel. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, sorry, there, there is there is a Discord channel for uh, uh, there, there is a Discord channel for uh, for a contract. Uh, you can uh, answer your question there if you are interested to. To, to participate on uh, the migration work, I will be there to to, to guide and uh, to answer uh, to your question. Sure. Thank you, Sohail.
i guess uh, thank you thank you very much